In this example, I'm going to create bar graphs that are linked to an Excel spreadsheet, and the bars will self-adjust on the output as the numbers change in the Excel spreadsheet. So let's add a 3D cube primitive and first change the Y center of rotation to the bottom of the cube. Now scale the whole cube down to about 0.6 and move it over to the left so we can see the depth of it. Now let's change the color of it to red. I want to add some animation to the cube, so at time 0, adjust the Y scale down to 0. Then at 1 second, let's scale it back up to the topmost position. So in this case, it is 1.2 in the scale. This is what the animation will look like. It'll go from the bottom all the way and grow to the top. Now let's get a little fancy with this and add a reflection bar to it at the same time. So I want to copy the bar and rename it Reflection and we'll flip it over 180 degrees. And let's adjust the transparency down to about uh, 30. And now for the reflection, let's uh, adjust it so that it's not as tall as the main bar. So if we bring the end point down to about 0.3, both bars will grow at the same time, but not the same amount. I want to database link this to an Excel spreadsheet, so let's first make the Excel file. This could be used for an election bar graph, so let's name the first field Candidate 1. In the next field below, let's decide on what the maximum amount of seats or votes the candidate can get. So in this case, I'll pick 150. Now for the next two numbers, put in the same values as we used to create the correct scale for the bars. The first bar was set to 1.2 and the reflection was 0.3. So the question is, how do we get the 150 seats equal to those two numbers? So let's use the calculator, put in 150 and divide it by 1.2 equals 125. So let's create a formula for that. In this second field, type equals A2 divided by 125. The result is 1.2. So we'll do the math again for the reflection. 150 divided by 0.3 equals 500. So the formula would be equals A2 divided by 500. So now let's record this Excel file. I usually record these files in the database folder and in an Excel subfolder. Actually there's one more thing we need to do to this Excel file is to share the workbook so that it, Lyric will be able to link to it while it is open. So now to DB link this Excel file to Lyric, we must make an ODBC database. Clicking this icon, you can easily open up the ODBC Data Source Administrator. Click the Add button and select Microsoft Excel Driver from the list. Let's select the workbook from the correct folder. I usually copy the name of the Excel file and name the ODBC the same name. Now click OK a few times to get out of these menus. Now back in Lyric you will see plus signs beside the elements in the timeline. Click the plus sign and select the keyframe on the Y scale. Right click and select Modify Keyframe Attribute. Select Election from the drop down list, Candidate 1 and assign the correct record. The first record is the 150 but we actually want the next record so type in 2 and OK. Now do the same for the reflection element. Click the plus sign and right click on the keyframe, second keyframe in the Y scale and select modify keyframe attribute. This will be record number three. Now record this scene and recall it and press play. The bars will grow according to the Excel numbers. So let's adjust the numbers and play the scene again. So in this case, the bars only grew half the amount. But really the desired result was to have this scene on the output and as the XL numbers are adjusted, the bars would self-adjust. 
So here's how we do that. I'm going to click on the reflection element. I'm selecting the text and copying the text. Click the transition properties and click the inherit state button. In the from node box, paste in the reflection text. Now select name from the pull down. Now select the cube element and do the same inherit state for it. Inherit state copies the end keyframe and applies it to the start keyframe automatically so the animation will finish and then when a new value is sent it will animate from the ending position. The last thing to make this scene complete is add a 2D text box to the scene and flag it as continuous update. That will make the scene continuously update while on output. To make this scene keep looking for the DB update, click on the event properties and at the one second mark in the timeline click activation and select default which means it will keep repeating the scene every one second. And the second activation would be update the DB link. In the transition properties set that set that event to loop. Now record the scene. Recall it and play it to air. It will do the initial animation from 0 to the XL number that we had set. Now change the number in the XL file and resave it and you will notice that the bars automatically adjust to the new numbers. Okay, let's take this one step further. I've already uh, made a new scene that has three uh, bars with reflections. I basically copied the red bar and pasted it down two more times. These are all grouped into their own groupings. The Excel file has three candidate numbers and I made sure the inherit states were changed to reflect the element names and adjusted the DB links to the other two candidates. Then I added 2D text boxes and linked that to the numbers on the Excel file as well. Now in this example I added a background to make this a complete three candidate bar graph. So now playing this to the output the bars will all self-adjust according to the values in the Excel spreadsheet.